We begin with the national championship game last night. Mark Fetters had said, please somebody send him a notification when we stop talking about Michigan. So it will be a while. This, this was a mighty impressive football team. You know, somebody made the comment that Ohio State losing to this team by six points looks a lot better now, especially after they take it to Alabama, come back late, beat the SEC champion, then just demolish the Pac-12 champ, which would come as no surprise. Because uh, I've said for years, any time a Pac-12 team in a game that matters plays somebody from the Big Ten or the SEC, they get run in the ground. I did feel bad for Penix. We'll get to him in a minute. But Michigan, you know, they, they, they obviously are so unbelievably well coached. You brought up before the show today, they're not bringing in top recruiting classes no. here over the last few years. So that means that once these guys, and this is what I've always said about every sport, maybe baseball more than any other. It's one thing to draft well, or in this case, recruit well. More importantly is to develop well. So like we look at the Bengals, yeah. right? They, they allegedly drafted well, say, on the offensive line. They've not developed well on the offensive line. Michigan may not be bringing in the best recruits compared to the Ohio States and Georgias and Alabamas of the world. Maybe they're not. I don't know what those recruiting rankings really mean at the end of the day anyway. But the bottom line is, once they get there, Jim Harbaugh has got some serious coaching and his staff going on. Yeah, I looked it up because you, you mentioned that they don't have any big recruits. And I said, doesn't Michigan hardly ever get big recruits? They haven't had a single top 10 recruiting class. Not a single one since 2017. And here they are, one of the most dominant teams over the past three years. And, and what they do, now this in the semifinal game, and the final game, I would say both were closer than they really played. Like, it went down into overtime against Alabama. But Michigan pretty much dominated that game. Washington had a – it was a one-score game in the fourth quarter. But Michigan dominated that game, and that just shows me that it's not about – in the NFL, you guys talked about this yesterday. It's about who the best who the best quarterback is more often than not. In college, it's who's coached the best. And there's two stats that show me that Michigan's the best coach team in the, in the land. They turned the ball – their offense turned the ball over five times this year. Five times. Yep. They only had 40 penalties this year. That is absolutely incredible. They will not beat themselves. And it's hard to beat a team as talented, as well-coached when they won't beat themselves. They almost did it against Alabama. Mm -hmm. The special teams almost did it. And we knew that watching that game, that this wasn't the Michigan team that we've seen all year long. They're just the best coach team. And they did it without their coach on the sideline for the majority of the year. That's how good of a coach Jim yep. Harbaugh is, is. He doesn't have to be on the sideline, and he has his team ready to play. Yeah, they dominated pretty much from the onset of this year. Do you know who those four turnovers were against, by the way? Four of the five were against one team. Was it against Alabama? No, it was against Bowling Green. Really? Yeah, four of the five. That's so that's incredible. not including special teams, but four of the five offensive turnovers were against Bowling Green. Yeah, I, 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 was, I, I thought uh, Washington did a decent job, actually, for most of the game. Yeah. Uh, it, just came down, it just came down to the end, and Michigan, uh, the Michigan defense is just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Having and, said that, though, there were a lot of plays out there that Penix missed. Yep. Yeah, there I were. I mean, there, yeah, were there were some. The one phantom holding call, the officiating, I thought, for the game was terrible. I, yeah. and, and, and I normally never badmouth officials, but, I mean, good Lord. I, you know, the, the one phantom call where they hit the big play, they were down seven, they, they had made a 40-yard pass completion, but, but there were a couple of others. I had said to, to my dad, you know, after watching Washington in the uh, semis, that I can't remember a quarterback throwing a better deep ball than Penix. And then how ironic that turned out to be, right. more ironic, maybe more like it, is that all of the open throws, so many of them last night, he overthrew guys that were wide open. Wide open, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I, again, I, I do think it was a little bit of a, a, a mental trip for him. I think he was playing a, a defense he's – Right. I, think, Has, I think the pressure got to yeah, him. Yeah, I, I don't think he's faced anything close to what he faced last night. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bash Penix too much. He didn't play great. I think he was dealing with uh, injury towards the end of that game. He lost his running back due to injury begin at the beginning of the game. It looked like he was on one foot. Yeah. So the offense really wasn't clicking. I thought it was strange on both sides. I think Tom, I know, was tweeting about it a little bit, but it kept. It seemed like Washington uh, kept trying to run the ball, and Michigan kept trying to throw the ball at various points in that game. 
It was, it was, if I had to rank it, it wasn't a horrible national championship game. Yeah, I thought it was going to be. Uh, it came down to, obviously, those two massive 40-plus yard rushing touchdowns early. Uh, but, yeah, I, it, was, it was a decent game. Washington dug their heels in. Yeah. Like, like I saw you tweeting about, about the runs, and everyone was. Literally everyone on Twitter was like, why is Michigan trying to throw the ball? Why is Washington trying to run the ball with, with a guy on one leg? But I, from, from the onset, Michigan was just, just I mean, bully balling. Just, just putting it right down the field. Those two big runs, two hundred rushing yards in the first half. Yep. But really, from the quarters, the second quarter and the third quarter, Washington dug their heels in and, and said, "Listen, we're not going to let you just run the ball all over us this this entire game." Now, Michigan eventually got over that because they started throwing the ball a little bit and, and and opening up the holes once again for the running backs. But yeah, Washington they adjusted well. Just Michigan was just the better team. Yeah, they're the best. They're the best team all season long. I mean, think about that <clears throat> league looking ahead to next year. I mean, my gosh, Washington, Oregon, SC, UCLA coming into that conference next year, mm-hmm. man. I mean, those are some of the teams you you you, you match up with out of conference. You know, well, Michigan doesn't. They don't. They don't play anybody in the preseason. But you know, whether it's Wisconsin or whether it's I mean, fill in the blank. It goes to Penn State uh, playing SEC teams, or you know, Ohio State playing Notre Dame, coming up with Alabama here in another year or two out of conference. I mean, it used to be you'd schedule an Oregon or a Washington out of conference for your big game. Yeah. Now, you're not going to play every one of them because there's too many teams. But my God, what a conference that's going to be. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very competitive conference. Um, th- there's not going to be any more just – coasting for Ohio State, Michigan, until they face each other. There's going to be an even tougher uphill battle for my Nittany Lions to overcome. It, it, <laughs> and quite frankly, <laughs> what? You're what? Not, name what's a wrong? Name what, a what, 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 what's so funny you guys, over there? You huh? weren't around here for the name very beginning of the show. Casey, from the very first week we were on the air, talked yeah. about family. That's right. And Penn State ties. That's so right. he is a Penn State guy. I mean, who would admit that publicly? I certainly right. wouldn't. Right? What? I, I just, what can I say? That's what I grew up on. Penn State's my, my team, always will be. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, the Big 12, uh, it's not Big 12, Big 10, whatever we want to call it, Big 19, Big 18. Uh, the numbers are relative. Yeah, they, they, uh, that's going to be a really, really tough conference. Tom, I thought this game, Washington versus Michigan, this championship, Honestly, I, I do think it came down to those two big plays early on in the first quarter. Michigan, they they did what they always do, run the ball. And Washington just wasn't really prepared for it. They overcommitted to, to one side. The guy leaks out to the other side and scores a touchdown, Donovan Edwards. And that happened really twice. I mean, they, they just were overcommitting, overpursuing. Because they were wanting to stop the run, and they did pretty much stop the run for what half that game, you would yep. say. They well after the first quarter, they started to whittle down. It went from whatever it was, thirteen yards per carry because of the two big runs. Yeah. Then down to four point four. Then down to four point two. Yeah, and then and then they had another big run at the end there to to kind of solidify it. But yeah, the the. The game plan for Washington, I think, was solid. They just didn't execute well enough. I think that, just like those guys said before, Penix pressured like he's never been pressured before, and that started to lead to him missing some throws downfield. Um, I don't think that we're talking enough about Dylan Johnson's injury. I mean, he he got hurt, yeah. on the, like hurt a, a different injury again on the very first play, second play of their drive, their first drive, and it just – you could tell they had no presence there in their run game. And I think that was a huge factor. I think that they were wanting to try to establish the run a little bit more. So they could throw it over the top, get a numbers advantage, try to make Michigan stack the box so they could throw it over top, and that just never happened in the end. So uh, that's kind of unfortunate for them that that game play never came to fruition. What a great point by our host, Tom Brenneman. And boy, oh boy, can that Elliot be a little rascal. Well, if you like that video, please subscribe, like, comment, so more people can see it. Yeah, there's a video over here. <laughs> One right here, too. See ya.